Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install a timer into your DINREL DB board. Now there are different types of timers, so I'll be demonstrating this one, which is the MTD8, and I'll also demonstrate this one made by CBI, the QAT TRDM. Now the first thing I need to do is trip my earth leakage and make sure that the DB board is offline. Right, now this is a lab setup. Your setup will be different. You won't have these conduits shown here. They'll be in your wall. In my case, I want to connect this timer for this circuit over here, which is my light circuit. If I show you my light circuit, it goes here. It's traveling through this conduit. And over here, I can turn my light on or off. Now, imagine I wanted this to be on a timer. I wanted the light to come on at a predefined time. So coming back to my DB board, the first thing I need to do is make sure that everything is off. Now I have my voltmeter here and I'm just going to take a measurement on these two terminals over here. I've connected my voltmeter there and as it shows it's zero volts, just confirming that the power feeding into this DB board is off. Now in your case you might find that you're unable to switch off the supply to the DB board. Maybe this is the council supply. You are still able to connect this timer but make sure the circuit breaker is down and also make sure you do not put your fingers anywhere near these two in-feed wires. Right, so my earth leakage is down and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a timer. Now the first one I'm going to install is the MTD8. This is a 20 amp timer. Now at the back there's two spaces there and a clip which moves. So all I need to do is clip it onto the DIN rail and then depress it down like that. Now because this is a 20 amp timer, I could use this for a light, I could use it for a small pool pump, I could even use it for a boiler. Just keeping in mind that if the load is inductive, you will have to derate the current carrying capability. For example, this is 20 amps for resistive loads. If it's an inductive load, you may only be able to get a lower current rating out of this timer. Please consult the specification sheet of the timer that you have purchased. Now over here I have these three timers. Looking at the connections, we first look at the top section and I can see that there is a live and a neutral and this one also has a live and a neutral and then this one says one and two. Now if I show the bottom side, this one says live and there is a space there but there's actually nothing connected. This one just shows live out and there's only one space. So this one and this one are quite similar. And this one over here has a normally open or normally closed connection. As you can see, it's giving you different options for the way you connect it. Now, for the remainder of this video, I'm only going to be showing these two timers. If you'd like to see how to work with a normally open and a normally closed timer, please check out my playlist on electrical videos. Now, the timer I'm going to use first is this one, although this one does follow the same wiring principles. Now, at the top, it says input, and then it says neutral and live. So I need to have a neutral wire and a live wire feeding into the top of this timer. Having a look at this one, it actually follows the same principle. It needs a live and a neutral to be connected there or there. Once I've connected that, I then can take my live to my load. In this case, it will just be that lamp circuit. My live to my globe will be fed from here. And if I'm using this timer, my live from my globe will be fed from here. Right, so the first step is to give it a live and a neutral. I'm going to start with the neutral. Now in this lab we mostly use the flexible cables because it allows us to reuse the cables frequently as we do different demonstrations. In your case you will probably have solid core cable, so your cables may look a little bit different. Now I have the neutral wire connected to the neutral point on this timer. So I now need to find the neutral rail or the neutral bus bar on this DB board to wire this neutral wire to. Now in this case my neutral bus bar is here at the bottom. Your neutral bus bar may look a little bit different. It may look like this with black casing around it or it may look like this. How I know this is the neutral bus bar is all the black wires are leading to here. Also the output of the earth leakage is connected here because the output of the earth leakage here saying neutral, this big black wire is connected to this same bus bar. I now take wire strippers and remove about eight millimeters of the jacket. Notice that I don't cut through the copper. I just pierce the jacket and then pull. It's more of a pulling and tearing rather than a cutting. If you use side cutters and you depress them too tightly into the copper, you may nick the copper. For example, if I 
remove the jacket using side cutters and I'm too vigorous and I depress into the copper, I've actually now nicked the copper. Over there it is nicked. That means that if it bends, notice how these strands can easily fall off, thus reducing the current carrying capability of the wire. Once I've removed the jacket, I twist the wires as much as I can and then I insert it into the bus bar. Now there is the neutral feeding the timer. I apologize for the messy DB board wiring because we are using the flexible cables. Now what I need to do is remove the load circuit that was already connected to the circuit breaker. So I'm going to be disconnecting this light circuit. So I've removed the light load. This is the wire that was feeding my light bulb and switch. Now the output of the timer is sitting over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to allow this wire to feed into the timer output just over here. Again, just remember to twist the wires as much as possible. Right, so my timer now has the output connected to the load, which is the light circuit. So all I need to do now is give my timer the input. So I'm now going to go from the output of that same circuit breaker, which was feeding the light circuit, and I'm now going to feed it round to the input of my timer. Now the thickness of the wire is very important. Yours will probably be solid core. Now in this case, in our lab, we're using stranded wire and all I'm showing is the different thicknesses. This is 1.5, this is 2.5, and this is four millimeter. The size of the cable determines how much current can travel through the wires. Why that's important is because of the specification of the circuit breaker. For example, this is a 10 amp circuit breaker and that means it can only handle 10 amps. So I could use any one of these cables because each one of these cables can handle more than 10 amps. However, the circuit breaker next door is a 20 amp circuit breaker and I could also use this circuit breaker for this timer switch. However, I am now limited in the thickness of cable I may use. I may no longer use a 1.5 millimeter cable because the 1.5 millimeter cable cannot handle this current carrying capability of the circuit breaker. I now have to use a minimum of a 2.5 millimeter cable for this circuit breaker. Obviously, you can always use thicker cable, but you can never use thinner cable. For example, in terms of the 20 amp circuit breaker, I may not use less than 2.5 millimeter, but I can still use a 4 millimeter cable. Right, now my timer has the live and the neutral connected to the input terminals of the timer. The output is going directly to my light circuit. The timer is now connected. The original neutral coming from my light circuit is still connected to the neutral bus bar. I did not make any change to the neutral wiring of my load as it is still connected to its original position. I can now close the cover. Right, now what I can do is lift my earth leakage circuit breaker. I can now energize the timer light circuit. You would need to now configure the timing sequence for your light. In this video, I'm only showing how to do the wiring layout. If you'd like to see how to program this timer, please check out my video on this particular timer, MTD8. When I manually control the timer, notice how I can operate the light by using the timer. Now all that needs to be done is the timing sequence needs to be set. Now if you're going to be using the QAT TRDM, I'll quickly show how to install it. Make sure this is turned off and that is off. In order to remove this one, I just push downwards to remove the timer by inserting my screwdriver in there and depressing that down. Now on this timer, you would need to remove this little black cover as I've already done on this one. I've now inserted it there and I follow the same principles, live and neutral. Right, I've now connected this timer. There I go from the output of the circuit breaker into the input of the timer on the live side. Then the neutral is fed directly to the neutral rail. The output of the timer goes to the light circuit over here. I can now energize my DB board, but now be careful because I haven't put the cover back on and I can operate that circuit. You'll notice the timer will now come online. The timer would now need to be configured. Right, so that is how you wire both types of timers. Thanks for watching and cheers.